On today's episode, we're going to discuss zero trust security models. And with COVID, employees are demanding that employees actually have enabled flexible work styles, which means apps are moving to the cloud, a company's device and application mix are increasingly heterogeneous. All of these factors are breaking down the enterprise security perimeter, rendering traditional security approaches obsolete. But this is paving the way for the zero trust approaches. So today we're going to discuss the five pillars of what the zero trust security actually mean. So that's going to be device trust, user trust, transport session trust, application trust, as well as data trust. By just looking at those five pillars, um, looking at user trust, we can definitely deliver some great features around that with Access Rights Manager. And today we'll be looking at application trust with SEM, which is going to help you to monitor your environment for any incidents and events. Um, it's always great to be proactive rather than reactive when you're talking about zero trust and looking into any insider as well as any outsider threats. And we're also going to discuss it with Network Configuration Manager and Server Configuration Monitor. And what those are going to be able to help us with is the device trust, your transport layer, as well as your application trust and data trust. So let's go ahead and dive in. Getting started on zero trust, we're going to look at the um, user trust pillar first. And with that, we're going to look at Access Rights Manager. Access Rights Manager really takes care of all your user permissions within your um, infrastructure. So um, zero trust is really based on a least privilege principle. And with Access Rights Manager, you can ensure that users only have the amount of access rights that they really need to have in order to do their job. And your very first step with before you getting started on um, managing user permissions, you should look into who has what access as of today. You should analyze everything, document everything, and then you're getting started on changing everything. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Sven, who's going to guide you through the product. Thanks, Manja. The first step that I would do in this case is, of course, to go to the dashboard and to see what kind of... Uh, um, perhaps misconfigurations you might have in your environment. And one of the um, interesting things is, for example, inactive accounts. So you can use ARM quickly um, to check for your inactive accounts or inactive computers over time and uh, see what accounts these are and um, perhaps disable them or delete them, getting them out of your system. The other things are, um, for example, you see here a lot of these things, um, groups and recursions. For example, it is also an issue that uh, is quite often happening. So, for example, that you have um, several groups that um, are members of each other. And the issue with that is that you might have um, then a situation where a group um, or a group of um, accounts gets permissions of all these groups. So, for example, if you take a look here, we have here a recursion happening so this group is a member of um, this group and that group is again a member of this group so that's uh, not a perfect situation and um, that's something that we might want to change and this is something that you can quite easily do with arm by simply removing then here for example either this group membership or the other one that is part of that and as you can see here below any activities or actions that you um, perform in arm needs and comment so that you uh, always know um, who has not only who has done this but why something has happened because um, the why is um, the most difficult thing to find out afterwards another good um, interesting metric is also here the capital's token size not because of the capital's token size but um, the Kappos token size gives also a good indication of how many um, members, uh, group memberships an account has. And this means uh, this could, for example, be an indication that this user is um, overprivileged in certain levels. So um, you can simply click on this user, for example, and quickly see on um, the left side um, how many group memberships he has and to what groups. And again here, you can quite easily change them or even then uh, in this list, start to search for a certain area that you might be interested in. And then you, for example, see all these groups and can change them. 
Okay, this is just um, the starting point so that you um, see misconfigurations, but let's take a look now at um, the status quo or analyze the status quo of your permission structure. So for example, we are interested in who has access to a certain folder on um, your file server, which is called marketing. So this is the directory that I'm interested in. Um, redirects me to the resources view and I see here marketing highlighted and on the right side, I see the permissions that are um, set there and available. What interests me here the most is not only um, all of the permissions, but also as you see here below, we have how often granted. That means if you sort the list, you can easily see that we have um, some users that have um, multiple passes where they get um, permissions from. So for example, if I take a look at um, this user here, Ludwig Carlson, I see that he has a read and execute permission, but also a modify permission on the marketing folder. The modify permission is due to um, the user being direct member of the um, resource group. And read and execute, he gets um, via um, a functional group that is called marketing. So that's seems to be quite okay, so that's not an issue, but in other cases you might f find uh, weird um, situations where you have um, modify and full control permissions that they shouldn't have. If you, for example, take also a direct um, view on the access rights, you can also see quickly that, for example, um, we have several users that get um, direct access still to this folder. Um, same here for read and execute, here for modify, which is not a best practice and uh, which you should um, perhaps change if you find something like that in your environment because we have best practices like HEDLP um, that Microsoft introduced simply to keep your system clean or let's to take the complexity out because complexity is, um, is the enemy of security. So you should keep that in mind. So after having seen all these things, the information who has um, permission on, uh, for example, a marketing folder, you can, of course, at any time create the same thing um, as a report so um, that you um, have this, whatever you want in a PDF, Excel, or whatever um, format. And you can even schedule the execution and get this report sent to, for example, um, the responsible um, manager or um, data owner if you are following a data owner concept. What you can also do, of course, is you can have a user's view report or you can change that. In this case, as an example, I just create a quick user's view report, which takes a little bit of time, but not that long. And what we see now here is the um, title which describes um, all necessary configuration details about a report and that you also um, be aware that there are no um, scan error detected so that you have uh, valid information here. And then you see the data below. You see the report for marketing, for the marketing folder, for example, you see all the users and what kind of permissions they have. That's going down to all the um, folders that we have. And um, um, at the end of the report, just let me scroll down a little bit. find also then, of course, um, as the structure of the groups and who is members of the groups. And last but not least, of course, you have also um, an explanation about what each of these icons means so that um, a non-technical user can also better understand what he is looking at. Okay. What we can, can, of course, also do is um, we uh, can also have um, alerting capabilities on um, changes in the AD or on file servers with ARM. So let me open the management area here. So for example, for changes in directory, just take a look quickly at this alert. For example, we can uh, um, alert on directory permission, ACL changes. So for example, if you have a sensitive area where you have um, your HA, uh, HR data or finance data stored, you can um, monitor this not only for um, activities, but also alert if some changes occur. So for example, in this ways for the ACL change on directories and on file permission changes, then you can set, for example, um, a threshold 
if you would, for example, create a report on um, dele uh, deletion or whatever, and you can also um, create actions on this. So for example, sending an email to a certain um, group of people, you can write to the Windows event log, you can execute a script, or you can even um, send a, um, a syslog message to any um, CM you are using. For example, Sam from SolarWinds. The other thing is that um, you should also document changes. So um, this, can, uh, this is something that you, um, as I already mentioned, that you need to provide this information, why you have done a change uh, with every action. And uh, you see this information later in the logbook or, for example, here with error object where you have these uh, little um, piece of paper. If you double click there, you are redirected into the information and then you see the complete life cycle of this object. So you see what happened over time with, for example, this folder, with every user, with every group, and you see then actually the complete information. So for example, here that was the user account. Um, this is the command why something happened. You see the changes in detail step by step that happened and you see even the credentials that were used for that. You can even go into logbook um, directly if you don't want to go by the um, resource itself. You can select a time frame. So for example, let's go back a little bit in time so that we have more entries in here. And then we see here in the matrix the um, activities that were um, that we are locked and we can so for example take a look at account created and then we see the filter being applied and if you look at one of the dates this Tuesday for example we see um, the activities that happened and um, of course the details below in that window down there good so the next thing is um, user creation. We can create a uh, use arm um, also to create users. And the thing is here that uh, you can use a variety of templates that we are already created. Um, for example, we can take marketing user that we want to create. And then we have a template. And this template, if we start to fill this out, you will notice that um, other fields are dependent on this field and being uh, um, also filled out. Like, for example, it's a, uh, um, some account name. Uh, we can choose via the um, um, drop down menus, the organization unit, and other parts of this area, even group memberships that um, are given um, initially to the user. And this template will create a user um, according to the template you created, for, for example, via um, different sets of uh, permissions of AD attributes. And this is being stored in a file um, in, in a JSON um, script language. This might be, let's say, a little bit uh, um, difficult in the beginning, but it gives you a lot of flexibility that allows you because you can have um, validation rules with it. And this is for the uh, initial user creation process. And then we have, of course, um, the profiles. And these profiles are used um, for um, the mover um, activity within uh, your company. So if you have um, a user that moves from marketing to sales and um, allows you then to um, arm to change the permissions as needed, and this avoids that you have an overprivileged user over time. Thank you so much, Sven, for demoing and showing us the product and um, all it can do. So to wrap this up, what you can really do with Access Rights Manager is you can analyze your access rights to your resources and also based on every single user within your infrastructure. You can then create, create reports out of that. You can um, create a documentation um, that is audit ready for you to go. And on top of that, you can monitor and log everything happening um, based on your user access rights and have that forwarded to any kind of CM or if you like to security event manager. And with that, we're handing over to Ashley and Brian for security event manager. Thanks to Manya and Sven for talking us through some of the user permission management. Um, it's really helpful and it kind of covers how you both assess and manage risk over time. 
Next, we're going to be moving into how you contain risk and highlight security event manager or SIM. Um, basically, we're looking at how you detect any unusual security events and then how you monitor that over time, um, as well as responding. So blocking or allowing certain activity within your environment and uh, being able to just report and then adapt on those policies over time. So security event manager is typically your um, incident and event tool. It's gonna help you with one single pane of glass to log um, events across your environment, giving you some real-time security incident awareness and helping you to reduce your threat detection and response times. Um, so we actually have a couple tools built into the product itself, which is File Integrity Monitor and USB Defender, which uh, Brian is going to demonstrate for us in this demo um, to see how it can help you uh, keep your environment secure in this Zero Trust framework. Thanks, Ashley, for the uh, intro. So Security and Event Manager can definitely help you with uh, tracking uh, Zero Trust. We do monitor uh logs so we have logs coming in via syslog we also have agents out there deployed on your servers uh, we monitor things in real time so we can see when things are happening right now uh, we do that with uh, especially on the agents with the file integrity monitor uh, the idea is that uh, as those events are occurring you can be alerted you can see them here on the screen um, and get that uh, real time uh, impact so if something starts to go astray you know about it right away um, which is great we also, uh, before I dig in, we also have the ability to uh, monitor USB keys. This is something that uh, during COVID has been a really big uh, benefit to our end users, um, uh, to our customers. They're able to watch their end users and see if uh, maybe they're doing activities they normally wouldn't do at work. You know, you, you want to know is, are people plugging in USB keys? Are they, uh, you know, what are they doing on those? We're able to actually, you can set policies to make them eject those right away so they uh, don't have time to copy things. So again, we can uh, monitor both sort of the threats from outside, but also the threats from inside as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just a quick overview of this page is, is we're looking at uh, a summary of all the events coming in. Uh, we're counting the events. We're summarizing by type. Um, we uh, are summarizing the different, uh, like uh, here by a, a specific type. Uh, login failures, of course, this is one of the things you're looking at uh, in Zero Trust is, hey, are, are people trying to log in and failing? Uh, where, you know, where is that happening? Uh, what logs are those coming in as? And those those types of things. And we'll drill in and do some filtering in just a second. But you can see we've got lots of summaries here. Um, it, uh, you know, again, we've got firewall summaries, uh, traffic by destination port. So again, these are all the events coming in that we're normalizing and uh, summarizing here. Let me jump to the uh, live events. And if you'll notice that this will uh, continue to scroll as we talk, these are all just events coming on. We've got logons, log offs, those types of things. If we did want to uh, find, uh, you know, uh, things that are failing, we can actually apply a filter really quickly here. These are some predefined filters. I can also go build our own, but we can see uh, that these uh, uh, people are trying to log in and failing. So again, these are, are people in a zero trust world where people have to log in multiple times uh, throughout the or, you know, organization. They can only, you know, their, their credentials only last uh, so, so long before they have to log in again. You can track these. If things uh, start, uh, if you start seeing a lot of activity uh, or activity that's, uh, um, we can drill down on here and see a little bit more about this, but we can see uh, the time and the, you know, the source uh, IP and the destination. Um, you, you can start to track those things uh, and find those folks that are having problems. Um, or if there's someone trying to get into your, say, like a VPN or something, you can actually see those in real time and uh, aggregate that information. What's also really cool is, is this is real time information, but I can also go and look at this data historically. Uh, we've got a nice histogram up here. Um, that tells us about all the events coming in. And again, we've got the same type of uh, filtering that we can add uh, on the fly. So uh, we can look at severity. We can look at uh, the event type. So let's see, uh, we can load more. Um, I can also go and search. So let's search for log off or log on. Let's search for failed. It would probably be a better one. Let's search for failed. So we've got some false authentication. We've got... Uh, continued login failures. So we can at any point drill in on these, drag that up there, click search, and wait for that to load. We can see that that's happened a few times. 
if we want to go back and see, you know, is this a trend? Uh, we can go back and do two hours. We can do a certain day. And again, give it a second. To, uh, I got to press the search button for it to load. And uh, you can now see this detail, right? So failed authentication. Um, we can see uh, the IDs. We can see the time. Um, and again, there's Billy Bob. He's having lots of trouble logging in uh, on a regular basis here. But again, all of this is here. You can build uh, filters and uh, quickly drill down to whatever information you want. Uh, since the data is coming in real time, you know, we can go in and build alerts. We've got a, a bunch of built-in alerts already, but uh, we can build additional ones if there are specific things that you're looking for. So here we've got like critical account login failure. Um, if we go in here, we can uh, see just a little bit about how that's configured, but you can see you can pick events. You can uh, define uh, you know, which accounts that you're interested in, what rule, and uh, you can even uh, you know, have some filters here to control when you're alerted and when you're not. But the idea is like you can, we've got some stuff out of the box, but you can also build build these all day long in terms of, you know, what you want to be alerted on. Um, we can go back to events. Um, but the general idea in, in a zero trust environment is, uh, you know, you want to be watching for these types of events. You want to be watching when uh, they're occurring, if they're occurring more frequently, and uh, quickly be alerted on that. And and SIM can do all those things. And again, with the uh, with the nature of it being real time, with be able to watch those uh, USB keys, uh, we really can help you lock down your uh, environment, especially since you have a lot of remote users now. Uh, we can monitor this on servers. We also have a workstation option, so you can deploy these out to if you've got uh, people who are suddenly you know working remotely. Um, you can monitor their uh, desktops as well, so uh, and laptops. So it really can give you a complete security uh, view of your environment to make sure that you are, uh, you know, you're you're able to monitor that uh, zero trust uh, type of uh, uh, implementation. Awesome, Brian. Those are uh, some great use cases, and I think. Uh, kind of how you demonstrated there, we know from research that a lot of users, uh, sometimes they're just well-meaning employees that are maybe putting in a USB key and uh, didn't realize that it was unauthorized, but um, that's what Zero Trust is all about, right? Making sure that you're uh, secured your environment from any insider or outsider threats. So we are going to now pass it over to Des again, who's gonna look at NCM, and then Brian's gonna take us through um, SCM as well. So hand it over to you guys. So now we're going to go over the network configuration manager and I'm going to show you like how we can actually help assist you with like device trust, your transport trust, application trust and data trust. So one of the things that we want to focus in on is if your configurations for your network, that's where you're holding all of your information for security and how you're actually helping them to either be more secure or not secure, right? So how do we do that with Network Configuration Manager? I wanna go into here and I'm gonna show you some baselines. So a lot of people with Network Configuration Manager, they get worried about in Zero Trust, things called config shift. And what config shift is, is when we make little changes, little changes, and then everything just kind of starts to fall out of place, right? And it's like, it's not a security issue on the first change. It might start to become a low security change on the second change. And then all of a sudden you end up in this severe or critical um, area of your configurations and you're not really at a zero trust anymore. So one of the things that we want to do is kind of show you what does baseline management look like and show you how easy it is to actually apply it. So when I go into the baseline management, you can see we have some that are there. And what the great thing is, is that it'll show you like, hey, what's my mismatched lines? Like what, where, where are we shifting at? You can alert on this, you can run a report, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But when we want to actually create one, it's very simple. We can do it as a snippet or we can do it as a complete config. Now this helps you with network standardization and with any security level that you wanna work with, network standardization is vital to your company. And this can help you actually make sure that you're doing that. Cause you can make sure that you have your SNMP credentials put in, you have your VLAN set up correctly, you have your ACLs that have to be in place. So this is where you can actually make sure, hey, we are making sure we have a baseline config, we have our standardization within here, we have our zero trust ACLs in here, or abilities within here that we are going to actually monitor. So we can come down here, we can put in our script, 
We can say apply this globally. I can choose certain lines. You can grab it from a config that's already in there so you don't have to, you know, um, revert anything or create your own. You can promote it to a baseline. So we make that functionality really easy for you. And it's all because we want to make sure that we're helping you with your network standardization of which that you have. So when we create one of these, I'm going to cancel out of here real quick, and I, you can assign it to your nodes. I want to show you what it looks like if something does go awry. So we can click into here and say, hey, where's my mix match lines? And it's going to look very similar to you because it's like that diff, right? It's it, when we do real-time change notification. It's also like when we do um, what is the difference between two configs. We're telling you what has been changed. When we're focusing in on any type of a security issue, what is the number one thing that everyone asks? what changed, right? What has changed? What has happened? This was secure before. We didn't have these issues before. We were cleared, but all of a sudden they're able to get in here and it doesn't make sense. You can very easily see the date and time and we can focus in and say, hey, at this time there was a config shift of which that has happened and now we can see exactly what's changed. There, like here, there's no platform, any, it's, everything's being disabled. We can start to actually go in here and say, look, the boot flash is different. What is happening here? So this is also something if you have somebody that is doing an inside attack or an outside attack, what are they changing? Where are they going? And you can immediately start to shut them down and revert it back so that we can get things done. Now, when we want to talk about the reports, I wanted to show you the baseline report because this helps you out when you're auditing to prove everything of which that's happening with you. So I'm just going to put baseline in here and do a search. And I can see my baselines right here. I can see, well, Brian's going to talk about the server configuration in a minute, but we can also see the NCM one that's playing a role here. So I'm just going to click on it so you can see quickly. And we can say, hey, we have no conflict on this, but the other baselines of which that we have applied, we have conflicts that are there. So I can drill in quickly and see that. You can schedule this report. You can have this report sent out to you weekly, daily, however you're wanting to do that. We can alert on changes. So it really helps you to stay on, on top of config shifts as well as an audit trail, which I think is very important for everyone to have is when did things happen and when can we actually show what we have done or have not done. Now, when we want to talk about um, zero trust as well, when we want to say, hey, users or devices themselves, like who's accessing, who's touching things, that always comes down to you have to be more in real time. So for me, what I like to focus in on is real-time change events because they're going to be able to help you out and say who did what. So we can see like there was a real-time change that was actually detected, and this is either by syslog or traps. And I can see that it was a successful, we downloaded it, we've seen that there was an actual change on this device. We can see like somebody uploaded scripts, we can see anything of which that they're doing, and then we can immediately get alerted on this from email, text, anything of which that you're wanting to do those, and we can actually see what change, when, and how. And when we're talking about um, wanting to be able to allow users access, as well as, you know, what do, what do we want to talk about transport sessions or things of that nature? You're wanting to make sure you have that network standardization, but also we have pending approvals. So we can have tiers because your number one issue that you're going to have that can actually cause you a lot of security is not that people are vindictive or trying to come after you. It's by mistakes, right? Like they accidentally, you know, use the wrong port or they accidentally applied the wrong ACL. Your baselines are going to help you to stay on top of that because it's going to show you if anything shifted. Compliance reports are going to help you to mandate it. But then if you have an approval system, this is going to help you manage it. Who's doing what? So when we do the approval system, we can actually view and edit this and you can have th up to three levels. You can have, um, you know, one person has to check you, two people have to check you or two people have to check you and you have to be checked yourself. So this is going to show me exactly what they're trying to do before they get it implemented. And you're saving yourself a lot of time on those fat fingers, as they call them, because we don't want to make sure that people are, are making a mistake. You know, you're accidentally putting it as 100 megabytes instead of 10,000 or you're doing it opposite. So we see the script of which that they're wanting to run automatically so we can validate it. Where are they actually putting this to? What devices are they going to? I can immediately check it to make sure like, hey, this is the right script. It looks accurate. This is exactly what I'm looking for. This is what I need. And then, then that's exactly where we're going to go from there, right? Like then I can approve it. I can do it immediately or I can schedule it. 
So those are the things that you have to put in together is your approval systems with your real time change notification, because if you have an approval system, then and then you all of a sudden you notice a real time change and it's a user that's not in the approval system. Shut it down, shut it down immediately. And you're able to compare those quickly and see like something is out, right? Like something's wrong, because when the real time change, we will show you a syslog or a trap, however you want to have it set up, who logged in, who did what? And so you'll be able to quickly be able to tell immediately who's making the changes and you can verify if they're actually using the approval system. So all this helps you to, to actually maintain your security policy so that you can actually help yourself to stay more aware. So when we talked about real time change baselines, we've talked about the approval system. Now, how do we actually mandate that and to go through? And that would be your compliance. This is how you're going to set it in stone. This is how you're going to make sure that things are coming across there accurately. And when we go into our compliance reports, you can set these up to match your security policy. They're 100 percent customizable. So we can look in here and I can immediately assess the situation. So I can say I'm running this report. You can schedule these reports in your jobs. You can do an automatic remediation to this if you're needing to. A lot of people like to do that for their audits as well. But we can immediately say if we have data only supposed to be on certain ones or if we have applications and traffic that's only supposed to be in a certain devices, especially when you're talking about like SD-WAN or SDN networks, you really want to make sure that it's working correctly, right? So we have to make sure that the devices are actually like going to where they're supposed to be. You can set that up in a configuration report. You can also set up security reports in these for your compliance. And what that's going to do is help you to match up your zero trust model. It's going to help you with device trust because you can prove it. It's going to help you with your transport session trust because you can actually apply that for your config and your network standardization. You can do application trust as well because we can validate your application trust from a compliance report. And then also your data trust, right? Because as you're doing application and or data, you can make sure that traffic is not on the wrong devices by actually doing a compliance report that's going to be there. So these are all things that can accumulate and help back you up for when you're doing your zero trust model. And something that I really want everyone to focus in on is with automation and orchestration, as well as um, needing that visibility, Solar Winds has your back on that, as we can see from the demos of which that you've done in this lab episodes as well. But it's one of those things that you have to have visibility, but in security, I can't stress this enough, you have to back it up and prove it. So you have to maintain your audit reports. You have to be able to know, is there changes? Where's the change? When did the change happen? Who has access? Who does not have access, right? Like these are all things that can help with you. And when we're talking about the zero trust and what everybody's really worried about, right, is, you know, access. As we said before, everybody's wanting to be able to access it from home. We're remote. I wanted to show you that the power with NCM as well as your, you know, network performance manager and things like that is that you have things with VPN that we're able to see on those devices, right? On your firewalls, we can show you remote access. We can show you site to site access. This is my favorite report with COVID because if we can validate like, hey, are your users logging into it? Are they having a problem? And if they're having a problem, I immediately know what protocol client information of which that they have. When did they try to connect? You know, when did they disconnect? And then also in COVID times, it's something that we also need to think about is is somebody pulling down a database? Is somebody pulling down information from finance that they're not supposed to? We would be able to see this information coming across and we would either be able to do it also with um, the server configuration monitor. We'd be able to see like, you know, hey, like, you know, are, is there something that's being changed over there? Or with network configuration manager, it's like, hey, is somebody changing things? Are we having a config shift? Are we noticing something? And then I can prove the fact on remote access, like how much data are they actually transferring? If I see huge gigabytes of data that's coming across from somebody that's in cells, that doesn't make any sense to me, right? So that's an immediate something that I can look through here and be able to visualize quickly with these reports that we can help me audit and also get to that mean time of innocence, right? How can I turn this around and figure out what's happening and how can I quickly keep on top of my network and my applications? And so Zero Trust helps you set up the framework, but Solar Winds tools help you back that up. Now, I would also like to in, kind of move more into the server side. So I think Brian can actually show us a little bit more on the server configuration monitor side. Right. Thanks, Des. Great uh, overview of what we do on the network side. And, and we do uh, similar on uh, with SCM 
uh, on the server and application side. So uh, STM focuses on collecting data multiple ways. So we can collect data from registry. Uh, we can r run queries into the Orion database. We can uh, issue commands on the command line, both in uh, Linux and Windows. And then we can also pull data from uh, databases as well. So we have a lot of different ways to collect the data. Uh, but we do the same thing that uh, NCM does. We, we're going to sit there and, and pull that data periodically. We're going to uh, compare it over time. You can set baselines. And uh, we do have some of uh, real-time capability as well. So the idea is, like, uh, just like an NCM, you can say, hey, I'm going to uh, look at my IIS server, and I'm going to make sure uh, that uh, I've reviewed those uh, configurations, and I want to track those over time. I want to set a baseline. I want to be alerted when those things change because uh, if people are, are accessing uh, your systems remotely, they could be making changes to configurations. Uh, again, it could be, uh, you know, your database uh, uh, ports. It could be, uh, you know, who's allowed to see what inside of your, uh, your web servers, uh, all those types of things. And you want to be able to uh, track those uh, and be notified of those and know what changed. Not only that there was a change, uh, but what changed? So uh, we can definitely go into like here's an IIS configuration change. Uh, this is one of the uh, web configs that change. If we drill in here, we'll get a very similar view uh, that we just saw. And uh, with uh, on the uh, network side here, we can see that there's been a whole section uh, added uh, to uh, that. So we're able to to quickly view uh, what's changed there. Uh, if we wanted to see if anything else had changed on this particular uh, IS server, we could do that. And we can see that not only on this server are we uh, watching IS, we're also watching the hardware and the software inventory. So if someone updates drivers, if someone installs a new piece of software, um, if someone upgrades Windows, we'll actually uh, track that uh, over time. Um, we go back to the uh, summary page. We can uh, also see uh, these are all the most recent events over here. Um, here, we also identify other things that you could be monitoring on these servers. And if we go down to the bottom, it's really long. We're also getting the configuration events. So you can also do alerting on these as well. Uh, a new feature that we just added uh, is uh, compliance. Uh, so if you uh, sort of the last part of uh, the NCM demo, uh, we were doing uh, compliance on uh, switches and routers and those types of things. We can also do that uh, on uh, Windows, uh, IIS, and uh, SQL Server. So we can uh, we can look at these and in, in based on uh, particular policies like STIG, we can actually come in here and tell you how compliant are you? Are you uh, uh, are you meeting that compliance? How well are you meeting that compliance? What's broken? And then you can actually drill down and see uh, what do you need to fix? We have the remediation steps here as well, and we can show you what's what's broken there. So the compliance is a new feature uh, that just came out that gives you even more, uh, you know, more ability to uh, know if you're meeting your, if you've got those types of uh, compliance requirements, either internal or external benchmarks that you need to meet, you can do that with server configuration uh, monitor as well. Um, just real quickly on the reports, uh, uh, everything that you saw there, we, uh, like uh, Des was saying, you know, we've got the uh, baseline reports, we have compliance reports, we have change reports. And if we go in here and run this, again, this is a, a great report to be able to see. Uh, what baselines are kind of, you know, been broken across uh, the entire environment. Um, so again, you can see uh, the different types of uh, stuff that's happened here, software installed, OS updates, um, and those types of things. So really quickly, get an overview environment, deliver that to whoever uh, needs that. So that's a, a, a quick uh, summary of, of what SEM does. Again, uh, one last thing, one of the best things about SEM is that it's extensible. All those methodologies that you can collect data, um, you can add. So really the data, the configuration data that you collect is only limited by sort of your own scripting superpowers. If you uh, are really uh, good with PowerShell or uh, with the Linux scripting, you can collect data on almost anything and watch that over time. Uh, SEM will distribute that script to all of your servers. And again, you can start monitoring, baselining, all that kind of stuff. 
we don't really uh, we we've got some out of the box profiles and policies, but you can build your own as well. So it's it's kind of like anything that you've ever wanted to monitor from a configuration standpoint in your environment, you can do with SCM. So that's a, a quick summary of SCM. Uh, really great uh, complement to uh, NCM. Uh, if you have to worry about uh, configuration and compliance, uh, you know, and uh, zero trust is a, a great way to. Uh, it really fulfills the zero trust mandate of being able to track what's happening uh, in your networks, uh, uh, servers, applications, and databases across your entire environment. Thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I hope we've taught a little bit more about how SolarWinds can help you with your zero trust security models. And I want to say a special thanks for Sven as well as for Brian, for them helping us out for demoing and showing you how to really help that out. And guys, zero trust is as easy as it gets, so it's time to get started with it right now. Start looking at it, start working at it, get your company secured. Cool, guys. Thanks for joining. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us or write us on Thwack. Have a great day. Thank you.